welcome back to A Book Binger. My name's Shelby, and I am a girl who's binging a new book each week instead of binging Netflix. Let's get started on this week's book. If you haven't heard about Anchor by Spotify, it's the easiest way to make a podcast with everything you need all in one place. Let me explain. Anchor has tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. When hosting on Anchor, you can distribute your podcast on listening platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcast, and more. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. And best of all, Anchor is totally free. Download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Hello, fellow book lovers. Another week, another book. I hope everybody had a Merry Christmas and enjoyed relaxing, spending time with family, or whatever you guys were doing. I just hope you guys had a really great weekend. I did for sure. We went to my parents in Mississippi, and a lot of my siblings came. We had a really great time. So I was really excited for this podcast because I was able to record in person with my dad. This book he chose, it's called Magic Kingdom for Sale, Sold. It's by Terry Brooks. I'm going to read you guys the synopsis. Landover was a genuine magic kingdom, complete with fairy folk and wizardry, just as the advertisement had promised. But after he purchased it for a million dollars, Ben Holiday discovered that there were a few details the ad had failed to mention, such as the fact that the kingdom was failed falling into ruin. The barons refused to recognize the king and taxes hadn't been collected for years. The dragon, Strabo, was laying waste to the countryside, while the evil witch, Nightshade, was plotting to destroy no less than everything. And if that weren't enough for a prospective king to deal with, Ben soon learned that the Iron Mark, terrible lord of the demons, challenged all pretenders to the throne of Landover to duel the death of to a duel to the death, a duel no mere mortal could hope to win. But Ben Holiday had one human trait that even magic couldn't overcome. Ben Holiday was stubborn. So I had never heard about Terry Brooks, which is shocking because he has a ton of books and he's actually still writing books today, let alone I had never heard of Magic Kingdom for Sale sold. So when my dad had recommended this book, I was intrigued nonetheless, and I actually kind of prolonged this episode because I was really eager to uh, record with him in person. So I'm really excited for you guys to listen to it because I had a really great time. So here it goes. This week, I have my dad on my podcast And I'm really excited for this one because we've talked about it since I started the podcast. And he chose the book Magic Kingdom for Sale Sold by Terry Brooks. Dad, why did you pick this book? Well, I didn't start reading Terry Brooks until I joined the Navy. And I was on watch one night. And I decided before I went on watch, I'd stop by the ship's library. And I just happened to just grab a book and it happened to be that book and so I went down on watch it was four hours I opened it up and I think I had the midnight to four so that's like the watch where you like fall asleep on right so um, I opened up the book and I started reading it and I got so drawn into the story that I think I finished it in two nights of four hours and um, then I went back up to the ship's library, you know, before my next watch, like a couple, three, four days later, and looked for another Terry Brooks. And I found another one, and I read that one, but it wasn't for that series. I was like, I gotta find this book, you know, because I, you know, you can look through the books and you see what he's written, I guess, in chronological order. So when I got back to the United States, I went to the library and I found these books. And I started reading them. And that led me into more Terry Brooks and stuff. Yeah, because he's written 
a lot of books. He wrote Star Wars. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. So. Had you read Star Wars before this I book? I haven't read Star Wars at all. Oh, okay. So, but I know Interesting. that's where, he, I think that's, he's the original writer for of Star Wars. I yeah. I think that's where the Star Wars saga yeah. began was with him. Okay. So, um, but I really wasn't into Star Wars. I mean, I loved it as a kid, but the fantasy fiction of his, he, he's like Lord of the Rings to me. Like, whatever, oh. you know what I mean? Yeah. So, because I can't get into Lord of the Rings. I mean, I watch yeah. the movies, but the books I just can't get into. Yeah. So, um, he's been my go-to guy for that genre. Yeah. You know, the others, I really can't get into. Yeah, the others have a lot of really intricate details, and they don't explain it really in simple terms. That's for me, too. It's really hard for me to get into fantasy. And so, with this book in particular that's what I noticed it was pretty easy and I liked how it starts off with the main character Ben in the U.S. in New York he's he's in Chicago is he in Chicago Uh he's he is in Chicago Chicago. see I goes to New York yeah because he goes to New York for the ad Mm -hmm. but yeah it it takes place in a in a world you know in situations you know and then it takes you into the fantasy land where it's super easy to know and understand. And right. I also liked how it had a map because then I was able to go back to the map and kind yes. of look at things. I appreciated that a lot. Yeah, I kind of see where these lands are kind of physically located in the story. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I think what drew me, I like the magic part of it, mm-hmm. you know, uh, but the storyline uh, to me was that could be me. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, not that I'm a millionaire. I wish I was. <laughs> a multimillionaire. Yeah. And that's where I can be like, a million bucks. I'm going to buy this. Yeah. Even if it's not real. I know. So, that was and, crazy. And, and growing up as a kid, I used to watch Fantasy Island. Right? I don't know what that is. Oh, you'll have to watch it. Okay. Okay. But, um, you know, it was kind of like that. Is it real? You know, you're going to this island. But it wasn't really a fantasy song. It was about like love stories, yeah, pretty much. But um, at least what I remember as a kid. But that's what I kind of think of when I'm going to go to a fantasy island. I'm going to go and live out my my dreams. You know what yeah. I want to do, yeah. right? And when um, you know, we get into the character. You know, I never really got into the character portion until the last time I just read it. Mm-hmm. You know, I guess because I, I was telling mom, I was like, you know. When I was in high school, I I hated my English teacher. I think it was British literature. I don't know. He was a he was. I didn't I didn't hate him. It was just he made the class so difficult mm-hmm. for me. Mm-hmm. You know, because he wanted just to dive into this book and find the hidden secret messages and this, right. this and that. Yeah. And there was this. They had a book. And I can't. It was like some like boarding school or something. And we had to watch the movie and then we had to write about it. And I just was not into the movie or, or the book. Right. Mm-hmm. And then they would talk about these hidden messages, and I'm just like, I read the book. Where the you know where did you see these messages? Where do you get this? So, yeah. I told Mama, I said I'm going to try and see if there's any hidden messages, or just get to know the character, yeah. the main character, right? Yeah. And so, um, as I started reading it, you know, then I thought, man, I feel sorry for this guy. He lost his wife. You know, he was so in love with her. You know, and now he can't. It's like he's stuck. He can't go on with his life. He's like stuck in this rut. Yeah. And he's looking for, and then he's like, I need to get out of it. He realizes he needs to get out of it. And mm-hmm. He's trying to find a way. And he's like, man, I'm drinking too much. All yeah. I do is stay home. <laughs> and yeah. I was actually really surprised at that too. I wasn't expecting um, any kind of that like twist. I was yeah. expecting kind of some sort of love story because there's always a love story. But I was not expecting that right off the bat. He's like, Oh yeah, I'm. I lost my wife. I, yeah. I'm kind of, you know, and he's not even. He's not even forty yet. Right. And right. so he's like. And they had a bit. She was pregnant. I know. So and that was so sad. And he's yeah. just like, my life sucks. But see, when I first read it, I just was like, whatever. I don't care. You know, I'm. Gonna, I want to get into the, you know, into the fantasy part of it. Yeah. And so as I was reading it, you know, and I thought about okay. Um, I guess, you know, what was the name of that company? 
that was selling it. The the, the magazine it started with an R. Ro, ro, rosins or no, rosins? Yeah, rosins. Rosins. Rosins, and then it's like L and L or something like yeah, that. Yeah. Um, that's what I thought of. You know, like Macy's. Yep. You know, like the Macy's going, catalog. Right. Yeah. You know, when I was a kid, it was Sears catalog, and you know. Yeah. And, and and then like when I was in the Navy, we had what they call an AFI's catalog, Armed Forces something or another, right? Where you could look at its catalog and. Stuff. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. You, you're out at sea. You can, you know, like okay. When I get back, I'm gonna order this and order that. You mm-hmm. know? So uh, I was like, okay. So he sees this in this catalog, and it des- describes the land. Yeah, you know, and you don't ever see the twist. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. So he goes to New York, and goes to this place, and they kind of like do a background check on him. Like you know, is he pretty worthy? intensive one? Yeah. And, you know, I thought okay, they're looking for the right guy with the right qualities, this and that. And then when you get in the story, and that twist, because mm-hmm. I don't want to spoil it for everybody. But, yeah, yeah, I didn't know. see that either. Right? But it kind of makes sense then when you when you read in more about it and right. what that twist is, you're like, okay, that makes way more sense. Yeah. Yeah. So when he drives to Virginia and gets on this trail and all of a sudden he goes through this magic portal, mm-hmm. right? And, you know, just a lot of childhood memories, like Magic Portal, I thought of Land of the Lost, where they go over the, the you know, it's a Magic Portal, and, you know, all these things. That's why I think I was really into this book, because I was like, okay, this is, you know, I mean, yeah. I was like 18 years old when I read this book the first time, and I'm like almost 50 now. Yeah. So, and I'm sure that book had been out for a while before yeah. I read it. But, um, you know, it's like, you get into this land, and then they describe this land, right? And you're just like, oh. Okay, if you've seen Lord of the Rings or even Aragon. Yeah. Right? Um, which I love. Mm-hmm. I love the Aragon books. Um, but that is what I was picturing. My mind is there going, and he sees this land and it's all tarnished. And yeah. It's not, you know, some of it's pretty and, and it's still got its. Mm-hmm. But it, but all the magic is dying because they don't have a king, this, this, and that, you know. And mm-hmm. he meets this, well, I want to say idiot. But this <laughs> wizard that has no business being a wizard, right? Yeah. Because <laughs> he, like, doesn't even know his own spells, and he's, like... Mm-hmm. He's, like, you know, half a wizard. He knows very little magic, and he can't do it very well. Right. But it kind of becomes his uh, his advisor, yeah. you know? But then they get to the castle, and then he meets, like, the staff, and it's just, like, like two creatures. I, can't, I don't even know how to describe them other than, like... I they said they were like kind of like monkeys, but they weren't like monkeys. Right. Because and that's what I also liked about the book because he did come from our world. He was trying to describe it in ways right. that we would understand, which I appreciated. But yeah, yeah he called they're col colobs, kobolds or kobolds or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And I was thinking, you know, I was thinking about how they smile and stuff, and I thought of Cheshire Cat, yeah, but with teeth, like sharp teeth, yeah, you know? like bangs, yeah. but all of them, yeah. And then, um, and then the other advisor, the historian, the historian, mm-hmm. was a dog, yeah, and he is so mad that he's a dog <laughs> because that stupid wizard turned him into a dog, <laughs> yeah, you know, and he still can't reverse it, you know, and and, yeah. and so, um, you know, so there's just these things, you know, like you know. They become his like best friends. Yeah, you know, pretty much. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, yeah, they work for the king. You know, this and that, and they're really trying to, to uh, help him, mm-hmm. right? And and so when uh, you know, but you know, I guess there's been lots of kings before him that just kind of go and then like, nope, you're not doing it. Mm-hmm. And he's so determined to be successful mm-hmm. that um, he continues on. Mm-hmm. You know, regardless, because he's like, "What do I got to lose?" Yeah, exactly. You know? And I, I know yeah. he he goes through it. You know, he's like, "Oh, I don't know if I want to do this," but then he decides to do it. And there comes a point in time in the book where he's like debating mm-hmm. if he's gonna just go home. Yeah, or... he's like, "I could go home right now." Yeah, but he, you know, ultimately decides to stay. And they go. Um, I think I would have quit after the demon came and visited. You know, from the underworld. Mm-hmm. I'm like, "Oh, dude, I'm out." I'm, you know? Yeah, but he stays. But nobody wants to, um, you know, uh, help him be on his side. Right, be on his side. They don't want to. Uh, we'll be loyal to the king, you know, or you mm-hmm. know. They call him the plague king. Yeah, exactly the plague king. Yeah, 
And so uh, he's like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to get their loyalty. I'm going to get them to, um, what do they call it? Um, yeah, their loyalty. Yeah, it's... loyalty. But like, what was he, what was he trying to do? Get their, uh, uh, well, it was their loyalty, but the, there was a different word for it. I, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm it starts with an S. They swear to the throne. Something yeah. Like that, something you know? like that. Yeah. And, uh. So, you know, he goes to visit all these other little, mm-hmm. little uh, kingdoms or villages to try mm-hmm. to get their, um, to swear their oath, oath yeah. to the king, right? Mm-hmm. And and they're like, no, nope, you got to do this, this, and this, mm-hmm. you know, before you we... Solve my impossible problems. Right. And so he, he's bound to do it. And so um, he goes to uh, that evil witch who's, like, got the most powerful magic. Yeah. And, um, that was really clever too. I wasn't sure that that was going to play out the way it did. Yeah. So, you know, you're not supposed to go to the fairy mist, right? Mm-hmm. You, you lost forever. In the Especially fairy humans. Mist. Right. Mm-hmm. And so, um, she says to him, you know, if you can bring back this, uh, powerful magic, yeah, this powerful magic. And it was like in these little pods, mm-hmm. right. Um, I will help you. I think he was trying to capture the dragon or something. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. And, um, so he goes in this fairy mist and it's almost like how he thinks people see him. Like, it's like it projects something to him, like what he thought was reality, I guess, mm-hmm. you know, and then mm-hmm. he, he's in the, I don't know how long he's in this, the mists for, but it's a while. It's, it's like a day. Yeah. A day or two, I think. Right. But he goes through yeah. and like, he's in Chicago and, and, and his partner's yelling at him. He's an idiot, blah, 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 for doing this and mm-hmm. this and that. And then, you know, his wife, you know, mm-hmm. comes to him. And it's just all these, like, demons in his closet, mm-hmm. right? Or the things that were troubling him before he even came into this world mm-hmm. or into that new world, right? Yeah. And so then he figures out, well, hey, it's just my mind playing tricks on me. The, the fairies are, you know... And he realizes it, and he, that's where he realizes, um, I guess, how he is going to be able to, everything's going to be okay. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. He, he realizes, okay, this is just mind tricks. Mm-hmm. Got to move on. Well, and he says, too, like, if I can survive the fairy mist, then I belong in this world because right. lots of people can't. And even this powerful witch, she can't survive it. Right. She'll get destroyed if she goes in the fairy and, mist. And if he gets these pods... And he gets, he can use, if he uses the magic on him, like he tricks him into whatever. Yeah, it's like a spell. If they're bound to him. To him, Everything right. he says, they they, they have, have to, to do, do it. it right? mm-hmm. And so, uh, oh yeah, we forgot about the willow. His willow. I know. That part was a little weird. It was. I was like, So what? we're kind of skipping ahead the, the, the story, but, you know, he needs this, he goes to get his oath, you know, for the. Uh, the river people. The river people. Mm-hmm. And, um. Before he gets there, he's taking he's butt naked in this lake that's got warm water. It's not even like a lake though. It's a, like a pond. I yeah, think. but they call it um, they call it something else. I can't remember the name of it. There's so many, uh, you know. Yeah. But, it, but it's part of the the lake, the river people. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And he's like, and then he comes on to this beautiful girl. Mm-hmm. She's also naked. But she's also not a girl in right. this form. Because she's got, I pictured it like horse hair. You know, because it says like she's got really long hair. And right. then it comes off her back and off her arms and off her legs. Right. And it's just like flowy. So I pictured like horse's mane. Right. Coming off. But the way that he describes her, she's just the most beautiful thing he's ever mm-hmm. seen. She's just drop dead gorgeous. Yeah. And then she's like, I belong to you. Because I'm- you saw me. Yeah, you, you saw caught me. me. Yeah, mm-hmm. you saw me, right? And I don't know if it's because she was naked too. I think it was because it. Well, and it was she was like in a cave part, or like a out a a cove right. of this thing, and she goes there. She said like twice a year or something. Yeah, and then but but and if somebody catches her there, she's in her most vulnerable state. Then she belongs to that person, and right. no one has ever caught her there. Right, and so that was. She's now telling this, the character, Ben, you know, I'm yours, you know, mm-hmm. we, you belong to me, I belong to you, you know, mm-hmm. and he's like, I love my wife, mm-hmm. you know, what do you mean I belong to you, there's no way, mm-hmm. you know, so that's kind of the, where the love story kind of starts to, mm-hmm. to come alive, and then something happens, she takes off. Well, yeah, because Abernathy, 
the, right, the historian. Yeah. yeah, he's like, dude, where'd you go? <laughs> yeah, you can't be out there by yourself because you're gonna get killed and this, this, and that. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so then, then that's where the willow comes in. So now they go, you know, they do their little swearing of their loyalty oath, or they're trying to get everyone to do it, right? Yeah. So they go to the the witch. I can't remember her name. Uh, what they call her the. The night. The night witch. Nightshade. Night, Nightshade. Nightshade. Yeah. And so. Uh, they, 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 they go as a group, you know, Willow, the mm -hmm. beautiful girl that's all in love with Ben, but he's not really sure. Mm -hmm. And you got the wizard and the dog and the two kobolds. Oh, and we forgot about those little... Uh, the things. the go home Go home gnomes. gnomes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they dig underneath. They're all with them, right? Yeah. And yeah, I picture those as dirty, smelly little like moles. Yeah, that's exactly how I pictured it was moles because they also describe them, they're entirely hairy, their whole body. Yeah. And they hardly have any clothes. And but they can't they're so dirty. Yeah, they're like blind. blind yeah. 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 So, and so. Everyone hates them. So they go to this, this the, the nightshade or the witch, and you know, he goes in the mist and he gets so, he actually, after he goes through this whole thing and he realizes, you know, uh, you know, he belongs there. Mm -hmm. the, the fairy people actually show him where the the pods are. Yeah, they're like, yeah. "Oh, you you are the king. You are the rightful king here yeah. because you have overcome the hardest thing in this world." Right, his hardships, right? Mm -hmm. And so he gets these pods, and he actually tricks Nightshade, mm -hmm. which was perfect. I was hoping he was going to do it yeah. because. Obviously, you knew that if Nightshade wanted him to go in, and if he came out, she was going to use the potty she was asking right, for. Right, he realized that. Yeah, and he thought, "What happened to his 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 fan, his friends?" Right. Yeah. She uh, sent them to the underworld. Mm -hmm. And how else was he going to get into the underworld? Right. Mm -hmm. So he tricks her into getting the inhaling the dust. I mm -hmm. think is what it was the to rid her. To rid that world of her. Right. So he sent her to the fairy world. Because mm -hmm. he was so mad. And I like how he thinks about it. Because why did I do that? I was such an idiot. I could have yeah. used her. You know, blah, blah, blah. You know? Yeah. But so then he's like, well, how am I going to get into the underworld to save my friends? Mm -hmm. And so the only way, the only creature in all the land was that stray bow dragon. Mm -hmm. And so he goes and tricks him into getting some of that dust. Mm -hmm. And then they go and they save his friends. And he comes back. And then he gets Strabo to not do whatever it was that the uh, the uh, first people he was yeah doing, he killing their livestock and yeah this, and so he starts getting all these people together to come together mm -hmm. and then um, oh yeah because he has to fight the demon demons. the underworld demon right but he needs the paladin and the paladin yeah. always coming and going right mm -hmm. they think he's a ghost mm -hmm. this this and that and finally he. he Goes ahead and he gets challenges the demon, or the demon challenges him because he comes mm -hmm. back and challenges him, mm -hmm. and the paladin shows up. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like the paladin's getting his butt kicked. At there, first, at yeah, first, yeah, right. You know, and so um, he overcomes it. He beats that the demon, and then he gets mm -hmm. everyone to they swear an oath to the king, and, mm -hmm. you know, and. and it doesn't doesn't describe how the if the land's coming back to life yet or not. I'm sure it does. Well, yeah, because I mean, it's just well, actually, it does because when they go back to the castle, oh, that's right. The castle, it's food full of full food. food. Yeah, and it's full of warmth, and right. they're able to stay in those rooms now because it's full of right. warmth. Right, and the, you yeah, know, that's right. Because he's like, how am I going to feed these people? You know. Yeah, he's like, uh, I guess I should probably make sure that there was food there. Right. So, <laughs> but I think that the the. the you know, the plot was, to me, it was, you know, we forgot about the twist, you know, where the guy that he goes to visit that sold him the land mm -hmm. was really trying to get him to fail. Mm -hmm. It was like this whole scam kind of thing. Yeah. Well, because he was also looking for money. Right. Yeah. The yeah. guy at Ro Rosin's. Yeah, Meeks. He, yeah, Mr. Meeks. He was, he's Quester's brother, the yeah. wizard's brother. Yeah. And he wanted money he wanted all of this money and so right. he went to america and yep. he was trying to sell it but he was a con artist through and through right well sure. he was a wizard in that land yeah you know that's how they were trying to keep their fortunes going. yeah going mm -hmm. so yeah but i really like the fact i don't know what the second i haven't i read the second book but I haven't recently but you know and there's a third book to mm -hmm. it 
So I'm gonna have to continue on reading it. But, yeah. But I I was looking at Ben as the character, mm -hmm. right? Typical human being, you know, lost his wife, lost, you know. And I think about you know, uh, like I have a friend whose uh, son just recently died of leukemia, but they didn't know he had leukemia. Mm -hmm. Two weeks after Aww. diagnosis, he passed away. Dang it. Yeah, and so now that person. I wouldn't say they're lost, but they're kind of like, you know, I don't know what to do now that my, you know, my, he's 21 years old. Yeah. You know, and, and, you know, it's her only, well, her only son, but, you know, baby, you know, it's like losing mm -hmm. Eliza, I guess, you know, the, the littlest one. Yeah. But I asked mom, I was like, how do you, how do you say you're sorry? How do you give these people encouragement? Yeah. Like, they text me Merry Christmas. I didn't even text Merry Christmas back because I didn't know if that was appropriate or not, you know? I was like. <laughs> yeah. Do you, do you send Merry Christmas when someone's, like, so sad, you know, mm -hmm. so... Grieving so much. Yeah, so, and that's what he was doing. Yeah. That was his grieving process, you know, and, mm -hmm. and when he met this Willow, and then finally he realizes, yeah, okay, they mm -hmm. actually, he actually falls in love with Willow, mm -hmm. you know. And because he realizes, too, that it's not him forgetting his wife. Right. And it's not him forgetting what they had, but it's just him continuing on with his life. Right. And keeping their memory alive. Yeah, you know? exactly. And I think that Willow respected that. You know, it was like, okay, we're okay. she was okay with that. Well, and she understood that he doesn't understand that world yet either. Right. Like, she, he, because he kept saying, you can't belong to me. That's not, people don't belong to people. Yeah. She's like, well, you also aren't from this world. You don't understand these rules yeah. and logics. Yeah. And she had her own yeah. little magic, so it was kind of cool. Yeah. 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 So. And... I, like I mentioned before, I liked so much that Ben came from our world because then it brought in his insights and his understandings of what this world is to right. help me better understand what it was. Right. Because I think it would have been way more complicated if it was like Lord of the Rings yeah. or just these other lores that are really right. deep in themselves. Yeah. And, 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 you know, in fact, I think the second book, he actually takes Willow into our world into oh really yeah if i remember right they cut they go and they visit chicago oh okay i think i'm not 100 percent sure but yeah. I, I remember a portion of the book i think where they went both of them yeah so she could see what his world was like yeah so oh, yeah i'll have to but, well yeah. and actually josh's best friend he read this book and when you sent it to me that first day and i was trying to figure it out yeah. um they were playing a game and i was I was trying to get this book up, and he was like, oh, what book are you reading now? And I said, I don't know, Magic Kingdom for sale? And he was like, yeah, sold! And I was like, yeah! yeah. And Josh looks at us, he's like, what? And his friend was like, I've read that book, I love that book. Yeah, yeah. Because he also, I think, has read most of the Terry Brooks books, too. Right, and there's so many of them. Yeah. And then, like, I told Mom, I said, like, I would like to have all of the books, because you get into the Sword of Shannara and all this, and it's just, I mean, it's, uh, it's this huge, long storyline. Yeah. You know? And, yeah. And it's, I think it's a better story than Lord of the Rings. Mm -hmm. You know? Because, I mean, it, it it's, you know, you're looking for one ring, and yeah, you're trying to save the world, but they're actually constantly in a battle mm -hmm. against other little, you know, other factions or demons or whatever you want to call it, evil people. Yeah. Trying to either take over the world or ruin it, you know. Mm -hmm. And, and um, I remember there was one. There was a. It was a druid. Was the magic guy? I can't remember his name, but I remember that the druid of Shinar or something. I can't. I think the book. But that first book that I read got me into Terry Brooks. Yeah. And I just started reading all of his books. Mm -hmm. You know, any any time I saw Terry Brooks, I got it. Mm -hmm. You know, if I was going out to see, well, this is back in the day before we had. Uh, the nooks and all that stuff. Yeah. I'd go buy the books. Yeah. And I'd take them with me. Mm -hmm. You know? And so I'll, now, when I was shipping, Mom and I would go to, uh, we went to Barnes and Noble, I got a nook. Mm hmm. And I put all my the books that I was going to read in my nook. Mm hmm. You know? And then I got on the ship, and there's a guy that downloaded like, 70,000 books on our <laughs> ship's library, and I downloaded all the books. Nice. I don't even, I have, I don't, I haven't even, like, touched 1% of the books. Yeah. But there's all my favorite authors in there. Yeah. You know, like Clive Klesler, you know. Uh, but then 
the mom started recommending some books because I like I like the fic or the nonfiction too, like the true yeah. stories and stuff. Yeah. And so I started reading these, so I got some other books that yeah. you can read. You know. Yeah, and that's um that's something that I've noticed too. Once I've started like reading recommendations from people, is that I've been following authors more so yeah. than I ever have because I was always looking for. Just like a good story. I would read the synopsis and if it was intriguing, I'd read it. I would. Right. I didn't ever look at who the author was. I didn't ever look at if it was a series. Right. But now that I've started doing that and I've gotten recommendations from people, I've been following authors. Right. And I I don't know why it just occurred to me to do that, but yeah. it's well, you a know, whole new world. What's funny, though, is, is with Terry Brooks, he's not like all the other authors. Like, for example, Clive Cussler, right? He writes these action fiction books, right? Um, kind of reminds me of, you know, my Navy days and stuff, but because it's all maritime stuff. But it's always, you know, I rescue the pretty girl, I sleep with the pretty girl, this and that, right? And it's like, it gets, it gets boring. Yeah. It's almost <laughs> repetitive. It, it, yeah, it's like the same James Bond movie over and over again, you know, or, or yeah. whatever. You know what's going to happen. Yeah. And so then I started reading Lee Child. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I bought Dylan a Lee Child book, Jack Reacher. Yeah. For Christmas. Yeah. But he wouldn't read it. Oh. So I took it to the jail with me when I was working at the jail. Uh-huh. And I, I read it. Yeah. You know, and then I started putting it on my nook. And then I thought, I realized it's the same storyline. It's just a different setting. Yeah. And so I was like, Terry Brooks is not like that. It's, no. It's completely uh, the, you know, same storyline kind of, but different setting but the story's changing and evolving and, mm-hmm. you know, with the, with, with the times and it's, mm-hmm. it's. Well, and that's you know, why he has so many books. Right. Because not only does it capture the attention of the reader, but it progresses, it grows. Right. And, and that's the sign of a good author. Right. And that's the same with the Magic Kingdom books. I think he only made three. Maybe not. I don't know. But if it just that whole series just progresses, mm-hmm. you know, and the characters mature and they, you know, and, and mm-hmm. you know what I mean. Their faults, they they work on their fault. You know, it's just like they're work, they're they're working like to, to become perfect, but not really. You know, they're trying yeah. to to figure out how to progress, how to develop. You know, and you watch these characters start developing. You know, and you watch the relationships develop, and and it, it's just. That's why I like Terry Brooks. Yeah. You know, that's why I'm so disappointed when I go to Barnes and Noble. They've got like three or four books of his. Yeah. You know, I'm like, really? Come well, on, you should have like a whole section dedicated to him so I can get every book that I want. Yeah. He is you know? now more though an older author. He, you know, right. his books were published. But he's still writing books. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, but, yeah. you know, but that's, that's the guy, that's the go-to guy for me. You know, if you want to read a good book. It, it's it's Terry Brooks. It's not the J.R. Tolkien, you know. Although I'm a little disappointed that Christopher P- Paolini did not continue on the Aragon uh, saga mm-hmm. because it was such a good storyline and it was really he's very descriptive of the lands. You know, you, you know when I get lost in a book, I'm in my own world. I'm in that world. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. and I think that's why I liked reading so much of the kid because I leave all the outside stuff out there and I would just like. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, push you into a whole new thing. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, yeah. there we go. Terry Brooks, Magic Kingdom for Sale, sold. Definitely recommended. And like I said, I'm not really into fantasy, but this is super easy to understand. It's a great story, and we recommend you going to get it and reading it. And if you do... Go ahead and message us. Send me a voice message because we'd love to hear those and uh, hear if you also think it's as good as we say it is. Well, thanks, Dad, for You're doing welcome. this with me. It was, it was fun. fun. Yeah. <laughs> Jinx. Jinx, you'll be so. What you do six hundred and ten? So there you have it. My dad and I's review of Magic Kingdom for Sale, sold by Terry Brooks. I definitely recommend those who can't really get into fantasy to read this one. It's super easy, like I mentioned before, as well as my dad has mentioned. 
If you have a hard time just understanding these different concepts of different worlds, this one was very easy to understand. And it was just an easy read in general. I enjoyed it. It was great to get into. It's easy to escape into, as my dad had mentioned as well. Please go ahead and visit the website, abookbinger.wordpress.org, and to visit the social media accounts where I post all the books that I'm going to be reading for the upcoming weeks, as well as my reviews on other books that don't make it onto the podcast. And if you would like to be on the podcast as well and have recommendations, please go ahead, send me a message on either my social media accounts or send me a voice message on this platform, as well as you can listen to the podcast on Spotify, Apple Music, Google Podcasts, or wherever you're listening to. Please don't forget to subscribe so that you won't miss out on net next week's book. I love you guys so much. I'm so thankful that you are listening. It's so fun for me to do. And I will see you guys next week.